Hello, and welcome to another Biohack Chat. I am your host, as always, Justin. Welcome back to the show. It has been... It's been a hot minute since we've done one of these streams, so I'm excited to I'm excited to get back into this. Uh, as always, we're going to be having a chat with my good friend Gabriel Lucina, who I'll introduce in just a second. Um, and the theme of today is all things neuron. So we've got some genetic engineering stuff we're going to talk about. We've got some updates to the neuron project we're going to talk about. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, also, uh, you can see the donation bar right right here. Um, we're, it's, it's kind of a general, general fundraise, um, I've just ordered a bunch of really expensive equipment, um, and, like, things are going really well in the Spider Silk project, so basically this is all just kind of, uh, you know, help, help pay for some of that kind of stuff, and just, you know, do, do the thing, let me keep making videos, all that kind of stuff. But, without further ado, um, <laughs> well... Gabe is doing his best weekend at Bernie's impression. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, wait, so let's just turn that on and say hello, Gabe. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Gabriel Lucina. Uh, <laughs> I work at uh, Sci House, of 501c3 uh, nonprofit. We do science research, a lot of education lately, and um, I'm as tired as you are. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> and this is Gabe's corpse. Uh, we're holding it up by strings. Um, yeah, we're both kind of tired. It's been a it's been a long science week. Lots of lots of stuff going on. So this is gonna be a fairly chill stream. Um, <laughs> um but yeah. So uh, all right, let's do this. Let's let's just let's just hop right into it. Um, okay, so the, the theme of the day is neurons, and so we can't really talk about neurons without talking about Professor Steve Potter, because this guy basically invented the field of messing with neurons. Um, like, his, his work is just so fascinating, just absolutely, absolutely fascinating, um, and was actually kind of, was the basis for the, the original Neuron Project. So, uh, for those who don't know, um, when I did the Neuron Project, I was filming it at Gabe's lab. Um, so this was something that we worked on together. Um, I made the arrays, and then I brought it over to his lab in Indiana. Um, <coughs> and we, we got some neurons growing on it, and, you know, we're messing with it, trying to get that work. Way too many neurons growing on it, Way actually. too many neurons. We just had, like, wait, well, we were, we were... Panicking. This the, was the, the word first you're looking for is panicking. <laughs> Well, we were just, it was the first time that we had grown neurons. It was the first time, so it just came out too quickly. <laughs> it happens that way sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so um, that was basically what happened. We, we, we um, like, but, a bunch yeah, of things well, broke also, all at the same just time. Like, it was kind of like a one-shot deal. Yeah. We only had, like... A, we had a know, set number of neurons and a set number of arrays and no way to fix either thing. And, like, the shipping had been super weird... And like everything was, yep. everything was. So fucked. we were just like, yeah. "Cool, we're just go we're for going it. for it." Just, just and barrel on, and it meant we ended up overseeding the and, array. Yeah, so. and so like many <laughs> things with mammalian cells, even if they're neurons, um, they require a certain amount to do cellular signaling so that they talk to each other. Yes, but they yeah. also get really weird if there's too many of them because then they're like, "Hey, I have too many. I guess I'm going to be cancer." Yeah, they, so like you really like they they need room to breathe, which was the, which was the mistake that we well, okay we made a lot of mistakes, but one of them was they need room to breathe, so we put too many neurons on the thing, and so they didn't really grow very well, so we didn't get any signals out of them. Also, the array oh, no, they grew too well. I think that I think the material was too dense. Actually. That's that's well, like they didn't grow growing well with neurons is they extend out. And they like make, you can see the little dendrites and the little axons and this kind of stuff. They did exactly. none of they did none Your of that. Croissants. Well, it wasn't even croissant. We want, we want, to, we see want, the croissant we want to see a palm tree. We, see the we want to see a palm tree, and we saw cream puffs. Croissants, dude. It does. They don't do croissant. Yeah, not a, not. A... It, they don't do croissant. They do palm tree. It's like circle with lots of dangly bits hanging off the end, and then a stick. It's palm tree. <laughs> it's a very crazy. It's a it's a it's a Tim Burton palm tree. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, so the, the experiment was based off the work of Steve Potter, and the funny thing is, after that video went out, he emailed me, 
<laughs> like he's like, so one of my one of my colleagues sent me your video. You did pretty good. I was like, okay. <laughs> Um, so that was that was really cool. But this guy has done some really really amazing stuff. Um, so in that in that video, I mentioned um, there was a lab where they had connected a dish of neurons, which you can actually see the dish that it's the one he's holding. So they'd connected a dish of neurons up to a computer and were using it to fly a simulated airplane. That was his lab. That's like his specialty. <laughs> That's his whole thing. Um, so. He's done a bunch of really fascinating research, and, and recently I've been really digging through a lot of his stuff because he's designed j not not only ways of growing the neurons on these little electrode arrays, which we'll, we'll talk about those more in a second, but also like ways to interface with the neurons, ways to monitor the neurons, like just all this kind of crazy stuff. Um, so for the next round of the neuron project, we're going to be trying to more closely emulate his work. Um, and we'll, we'll talk more about that in a, in a bit. Um, yeah, cause those, less, less freestyle. Yeah. Um, so, but anyway, so I just wanted to, I wanted to mention his stuff and show some of his stuff off quickly. Um, the, the thing that's probably the most impressive, assuming my freaking internet will load, um, was the neurally controlled animats, which is basically the, you know, controlling a simulated thing via dish o neurons. Um, so this is the thing that we're trying to uh, emulate, although it's not loading for some reason. Don't know why. Bit of oh, there we go! Yay! Um, so that yeah, this is this is the basic this is the basic idea. It's you know dish of neurons connected to a computer. Um, there's a you know some different stuff to look at the the neurons and see how they're they're doing, and then they're feeding that data into a simulation software, which then gets they use the data from the simulation software to then, like, poke the neurons and try and get them to do things. So, yeah, this is, it's fascinating. But he's written, like, 100 papers, 150 papers. I'd highly recommend checking them out. Just go to, this is this is a website, potterlab.gatech.edu. Just go there. There's so much cool stuff. Um, oh, we just had our, we just had our first uh, donation. Thank you, Matthew. Greatly appreciated. Greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, so yeah, that's the, so we'll, we'll talk more about, um, Professor Potter's stuff later, and yeah, this, this dude's basically a wizard. It's, it's quite impressive. Um, all right, so, so you said you wanted to, you wanted to freestyle a little bit. Where do you want to, what do you want to talk about? Because we also, we've got Brainbow to talk about, we've got all kinds of different stuff to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I really feel like we should talk about the Brainbow because even okay. though I shipped it a bit ago, it's because you're in, like, you guys might be great in Canada, but holy fuck if it isn't impossible for you to order things. So, um... <laughs> well, I mean, ish. I'm, I'm, um, I'm looking into getting all the accounts and stuff set up. But like, Yeah, I know. It's not your fault. That. It's not your fault. It's, yeah. it's customs. It it's really customs. is. Like it. Um, well, it's the, but your what, country is on fire. What do you have coming in your magic box? Okay, you so have a magic box. I do coming. have a magic box. What do you coming? have coming in your so, magic okay, box? So okay, so in the magic box that Gabe just sent me, there's a few different things. Thing number one is a nano drop, because I bought a nano drop. Oh my god, I'm so fucking excited. Um, and this is the sort of thing that like only the biologists in the in the chat are gonna know why this is exciting. This machine is very expensive. <laughs> That one, that was like an ass-clenching amount of money to spend on this thing, but it's worth it. It does. It is such a useful tool. It's gonna make and less than what one would normally pay. Actually, yeah, normally you really they, got it. For yeah, a, new they cost the fifteen song. to twenty, like grand. Yeah. Like it, they're hmm. and I got. I think I got it for like two grand, which uh, still makes me want to puke. But <laughs> it's worth it. Um, okay, so let's. But so in the other thing, the other thing in the box. Um, was a host of new DNA because I've basically become like you know how some people collect like decorative like china plates or like mugs or whatever gourds. I, or gourds whatever you know <laughs> whatever whatever tickles your fancy I collect weird pieces of DNA um, I have frankly uh, too many um, so <laughs> um, the the ones that I just ordered. Um, and are coming in the magic box from Gabe. Um, three of them are different flavors of this thing called Brainbow. So what you can see on the on the screen here... Oh, I did not mean to click on that. 
Um, so what, yeah, what you can see on the on the screen here is well, um, wow, uh, Harasha, thank you very much. That is really greatly appreciated. You are you are a dope person. Great, I appreciate you. Um, anyway, um, so um, yeah, this is this is Brainbow. The, the basic idea is, um, oh, we seem to be getting a little bit of lag here. Oh, there we go. Let's see, I think it's smoothed itself out. Yeah, okay. Um, so the basic idea is these are all different neurons. And so it's a really, really clever bit of DNA where it, it labels each individual neuron a different color. So it lets you take these amazing images where you can see the, the, like, the little trails and the, the heads of each of the, the individual neurons so you can, you know, trace basically how they are. Like you can, it's, it's it right. Yeah. And one of the reasons that you got to buy multiple pieces is because you can't cram all the DNA in, into one thing. Well, sort of. The, right? the reason, the reason I bought multiple pieces is because it comes in different flavors. Um, so um, the, the different ones that I bought, um, one of them just works. So that one's called Autobo. Um, and so I had a, I had an image pulled up. So, okay. So this is, this is, uh, this is the same basic principle of all brain bows. Um, this is, this is the basic idea. Um, so the way this works is, um, you have three different color genes. So in this case, a blue, a yellow, and a red. Um, and these little triangles that are in front and, and behind the, the genes are what are called locks p sites. Um, so basically the way this works is when you have this enzyme called Cree recombinase, which you can see here, um, it cuts and so basically it cuts the DNA apart and then sticks it back together. Um, and it kind of does this sort of randomly. Um, so on most kinds of brain bow, the, the, what ends up happening is um, it only turns on one of the colors. And so if you've got two copies of the DNA, you'll get two colors. And so when you mix two colors from a set of three, you get up to like 20, 30 different colors, which is why all, every neuron looks a different color. It's like painting. But, but, it, it's, it's exactly but like plastic. painting. It's, um, but so the... Um, uh, the thing with, with Brainbow is normally you keep the Cree recombinase part and the color part separate. So typically this is done to like a whole organism. So like they'll do this to like a zebrafish, for example, um, or, or a fruit which fly. Which is something we're going to have to talk about. Which we'll, we will talk about. I've got an image pulled up. I'm excited. But we'll talk about that in a second. But so normally these, these two pieces of DNA are normally kept separate. So you've got your Cree recombinase over in one corner and your rainbow stuff over in another corner and if they both happen to end up in the same cell they like you know put lime in coconut they they now kiss um they do the thing you put the lime in the coconut you shake it all up and you Justin. get colorful neurons um <laughs> oh we just had another donation thank you sasha greatly appreciate it um so the the idea is w when these two things mix so that when they both end up in the same cell it'll become colorful basically um, and this is one way of controlling where the colors end up because depend the, like there's all kinds of different control mechanisms built into this thing. So like this, do you see where this says THY1? Um, this is a neuron specific promoter. But if you have a different promoter, um, it'll just express in all kinds of different cells, and so you end up with just shit everywhere. Um, so it's a a bit less specific. So the one that I bought actually is like that. So it uses what's called a CAG promoter, so it's it's ubiquitous. So every cell in the organism you put it into um, becomes colorful, which I find valuable, because I want to like, this is useful for more than just neurons. Um, it lets you trace um, the lineages of different um, uh, cell lines and stuff, but what makes autobo... Also, you just like pretty colors. I do just like pretty colors. This is true. <laughs> um, I am I am a sucker for glowy pretty colors. Like <laughs> this is why I like redheads. No, anyway. Um, <laughs> um, but so the what makes Autobo different um, is that the Cree recombinase is built into the plasmid, 
So it's kind of like a, a one, one-stop shop sort of thing. Um, oh, we just had a whole bunch of, of donations. Thank you, everybody. So thank yeah. you, Olivier, thank you, Sarav, and thank you, Francisco. Greatly appreciated. You guys are awesome. Um, so, yeah, well, what makes Autobow weird is that it's, a, it's like a complete package. So it does the whole thing. You don't need to mess with having two plasmids and getting them both in a cell. You just, like, stick Autobow in the thing and it just does the job. And this is, this is the result. Like, you get all of these beautiful little colors and all the individual neurons are all labeled distinctly. And so it, it makes for really nice images that lets you do really interesting stuff. And so the, one of the reasons that I wanted this is because if we're going to do the Neuron Project again, I think it would be really valuable to have um, the, the neurons oh, yeah. labeled. Absolutely. A way to actually look at things. Yes. And especially because, like... Yes. Like, it literally... Also, it just looks pretty. Also, it just looks pretty. But also, one of the issues we had last time was it was very hard to tell what the hell was going on. <laughs> so, using this, it's going to yeah. make it so much easier to tell what's going on. Um, but... And it, it also has some other uses, which we'll talk about in just a second. We got another donation, and this one has a question. Uh, so I want to just address this really quickly. Um, so, <laughs> Jedi Knight Anakin Cringe Walker, thank you for your donation. Greatly appreciate it. Um, and the, the question is, how are restriction enzymes harvested? Um, you've inspired me to start building my own lab, but harvesting restriction enzymes is blank on Google. Um, so typically, they're... Um, grown in E. coli and usually with like a, a his tag on them, um, and then you just use like and a, a very highly specific. Yeah, this is. Yeah. Um, Some things you should just buy. Yeah. Well, so the other thing is there was an iGem team a couple of years ago that showed that you can use raw um, lysate of of the E. coli that are producing the enzymes to do DNA work. I wouldn't. I would just buy them from NEB, but, like... Just, yeah. Because that could cause so many other yeah. problems. But it does technically work. So if you really wanted... You, yeah, you, you... You could make your own restriction enzymes. I just don't know why you would. Um, the other, the other building, option... Building everything from scratch is a terrible idea. Yeah. It, it really is. Because every, every one of these subsets of tools is like, okay, I have this really great, like, can of Lacroix. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I want to um, have my own the cans of Lacroix. So first I'm going to go out and I'm going to mine some fucking aluminum. <laughs> it's like, no. I, I, I mean, no. I was just looking at this. I'm like, no. I do like I do like carbonated water. And then it was like, maybe I should get a soda stream. And then I did the like math of how much it costs. And I'm like, I would have to buy 400 bottles of Perrier before it makes sense to buy a soda stream. <laughs> like, yeah. And you can you can technically do everything by yourself. Technically, but doing everything by done. yourself, you'll never get anything done because you're just doing things yeah. to do things as opposed to actually doing things. This is why I mail stuff to Justin. Yep. Because he could spend a tremendous amount of time extracting laboratory chemicals from hardware stores and auto depots and that is how i got started just to be clear like and that's how he got started i got really good at it i just fucking hate doing it it's stupid just right would you like to think right it's like i could try and extract Um, sodium hydroxide out of like contaminated drain cleaner or i could just go or buy it buy it and it's gonna be cheaper and it's gonna work better so like yeah, so that's the answer to that question. Yeah. How do you extract res- restriction enzymes? You go to NIB and you buy them. You go to, NEB, and, you buy them. <laughs> you go to like, NEB, and if you can't go to NEB, you call a friend, hello, and yeah. you have that friend buy them for you. Yeah. Well, we got a, we got another donation. Thank you. Thank I, thank you, Jedi Knight. Greatly appreciate it. Hey. I'm glad, I'm glad hello. you... Oh, a double pay. I know. Dude. I, I, thank you. Fantastic. Um... So, um, okay, back on back on the the neuron thing. Um, so, on I mean, on on the topic of some things you you have to make yourself. Um, so, when it comes to like buying a neuron array, they're really expensive, which was the whole reason why we made it ourselves. Okay, so the reason that we did the original neuron project was because I made the plasma coding machine, and I thought it would be funny. 
Like, that was, that was it. Like, everyone's like, what? oh my god, are you trying to, like, revolutionize a thing? Are you trying to compete with Musk? I'm like, no, I thought it'd be funny. Like, <laughs> I have a plasma coating machine, I can make a neuron array pattern, let's put some neurons on it, see if it does anything. Um, it's not a meat, it's a carbonated beverage we have in this. Come yeah. on. Um, so, um... One of the one of my patrons, who by the way, there's a a, a patron and member only Discord now. Um, so he was hanging out on uh, the the patron Discord, and he was really really excited about the Neuron project. He's like, "Hey, do you mind if I try and design an updated version of this?" And so the thing is, like, I'm I'm already working with um, Ben Krasnow from Applied Science on the updated version. So he's making. Um, a glass version with like plasma sputtered things that are like you know 20 micron they're, they're, it's really sleek um, but Ryan the, the uh, guy on Patreon uh, was basically like so what if we tried to do it with regular PCB manufacturing because he found a company that makes um, neuron arrays using just traditional PCB materials um, nothing, nothing fancy um, and so I was like, right, I mean, if you want to go for it, go for it. Like, um, and he did, and he's been going ham on this. So this is the, um, hopefully you can see this. Um, this is the, what, the latest version of it that he's designed. Um, so it, so the first version of the, the <clears throat> neuron array project was like 16 electrodes or like 10, like it wasn't very many. Um, Oh, New View, New View Tampa, thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. Um, so, the yeah, it was only, like, 16 electrodes, and they were big, and they were chunky, and, like, they it was not well-designed. It was just a proof of concept. Like, bare minimum viable. Whereas this is now 88 electrodes, and, I mean, he's been... So this is just the, the latest image that I could find, but he's continuing to mess with it to, like, crunch the, the electrodes in tighter and tighter and tighter. Um... And this is all going to be done out of, like, traditional PCB materials. So we're basically sacrificing the ability to um, potentially see up through the thing, although we're we're working on that. So he's looking at maybe doing this central section as captain, like a thin captain film. Um, so that way it's, it's, it's transparent, but it's, you know, tinted. Um, but at least then we can actually see the dendrites forming and making sure that the cells look healthy and all that kind of stuff. Um, but so not only is he making, um, like, so he's, he designed this awesome array that, I mean, the, basically we should be able to make like 30 of these for like 80 bucks, I think was what he priced it out at. Yeah. Like it's dirt cheap. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's super cheap. Super, super cheap. Um, but he's also working on all the electronics to like interface with it. Um, so this is the, um, the like analog to digital board with all the amplifiers in it. Um, this is just the first version. He's still working on this. Um, but I mean, look at, look at this. This is so much better than what we were using last time. Like this is very well done. Oh, you mean, you mean better than you just holding two wires onto a microscope slide and being like, okay, we got this. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, this is actually designed to spec. Like this is designed to the level of signal that we're expecting from the neurons. Um, and so now, now the next piece that he's working on, and also it's not just him, there's, there's a few others on the, on that discord who are all like collaborating on this, which I think is amazing. Like I was kind of skeptical about making a discord, but like people are all interacting with each other and they're doing like cool stuff like this. It's, it's actually been really, it's been really great. Um, but, um, so now he's working on an FPGA um, to take all of the data that comes streaming out of this thing um, and basically, like, crunch it down so that he can shove it down a USB wire. <laughs> um, so that way, essentially, I'll be able to just plug a USB into my computer and have all of the data from the array come in in real time. Um, so one of the other things that we're going to be doing, uh, because I think one of, one of the issues with the first version of this was that we were attempting to do the hardest thing first, which was growing neurons. Like, growing neurons is a pain in the ass. They are very delicate cells. Like, if they're taken out of the incubator for too long, they just die. Like, they're just... 
a nightmare to work with. So, and also it takes three weeks before you start getting any signals off of them. So, like, yeah, you, you know, you're burning like a month at a time just to see if this this one piece of electronics works. So, I mean, but that's biology, man. It is, like, but but especially when I'm, if it's, if we're doing it like when I'm coming for a visit, sort of thing, that's not really viable because I know. I'd have to stay no. for a really long time. Um, if I mean, if it's viable, I need someone to man the doors while the you know Mongol hordes try to. Yeah. Also, I don't particularly want to cross the border from now until. Your country burns down. Ever. Um, yeah, <laughs> ever. Yeah. We're working on it, okay? Hey, We're doers. Yep, we are dude. We are go-getters. We are going to set this shit on fire, okay? We yeah. are on it. Yeah. Um, um, so we, yeah, actually, I... So I've, I've been working with uh, HEK cells lately. Okay. Um, the heckin' cells. <laughs> the, the heckin' heck cells. Yep. And... They both love to cluster, so I don't get that lovely croissant yeah, that I want to see. You get cream puffs. Yeah, I get well, not even cream puffs. They're like uh, like bear claws or something. They're just like <laughs> just big chunky messes. Right. Motherfuckers are just trying to be kidneys, okay? They're just trying to be kidneys. <laughs> like, let and, me be kidney. <laughs> um, but but they're also super picky, and so. You'll grow this cell line and they'll be like, you know, I can't do any work on them until they're at 90% confluence. And then they'll hit like 65 or 70%. And they're like, you know, my glucose is really low. <laughs> like, so what, you're just going to sit here and be a random ass kidney cell? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I might not even be adherent today. What do you mean you're not going to be? <laughs> no, I've got some babies floating off. Yeah, I'm just, I wanted to explore a little. What the? F you had one job. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. I, I hate Hexels. I actually, I was, yep. I fucking, I hate Hexels. But they're, just, they're, hey, but they're, they're an industry standard. They're an industry standard. It's industry, just one of those things. But also, like, they're just mutant fucking kidney cells. Like, uh, Everything's a mutant cell. They're yeah, just true. particularly difficult. I, the only ones that aren't are, are like, fib. Like, fibroblasts are the only not weird ones. And, like, they're weird for their own reasons. But, like, they're... Yeah! I'm like, I just, I'm just going to take fib all the time. I'm, but I'm also very partial to Vero cells. I do like Vero. Vero are nice. That, yeah, that, those, that African green monkey kidney, they, they're not jerks. Yeah, I mean, they're and cancers, but, like, you, you know... You grow a virus... <laughs> They're all cancer, technically. But you know, you grow a virus in one of those, and yeah. it's really easy to tell. Yep. Yeah. Um. So, um. Either is I mean I'm, man I'm I'm excited to do some some cell culture stuff. So did you send the pen strap? Was that in the magic box? Um, I believe so. Okay. Um. So one of the one of the things I have a that lot I, of it. Okay. Um, one of the things that I want to... Ah, oh, so that was... I sorry. Oh, uh, it's fine. It, like, um, so one of the other, one of the other things I want to talk about. Um, so the, what I figured was, um, probably the, the easiest, um, uh, way of testing the electrode array was rather than using neurons that we've, like, cultured slowly, would be to use a tissue sample. Because fundamentally, like, that's going to give... Why don't we just use a chicken brain? Base well, so like, but I was trying to figure out like what is the most, um, <laughs> like what what is the most like ethically viable thing? Like what is what are people not going to care about if I use? Um, what's easy to buy? Like what? Because I mean, there aren't actually many animals that you can buy live. Um, that I mean, like that also don't have a ton of like restrictions on them. Like I can't buy a mouse and then take it apart from like petco like that's not okay um also it's i think it's straight up illegal um but yeah it's just kind of rude it's also kind of rude like mice are i mean they can be pretty dumb but like they're they're also fairly intelligent whereas like nobody gives a shit about a lobster so i was thinking about maybe using um a uh so so lobsters don't have brains the way that we we think of 
Um, they they have like uh, what are, what are they called? Um, this is this just I this I don't know. This sounds like a bad idea. This is why we gotta go zebrafish. Well, so the thing is, lobster the, the like the of the little lobster brain. What the fuck's it called? Um, there's like a word for it, and I'm I'm blanking on what it's called. Um, is this in gland? No, come on. Fuck off. Ignore. Go away. Um, I'm, yes, the stream will be rewatchable after it ends, and yes. it won't be laggy. Um. Um. So, well, it'll be as laggy as it is. Currently. Okay. Um, but anyway, so so like I was thinking, okay, maybe lobster, because you can get lobsters, and they're the the biggest cluster of like brain in a lobster is actually a model for um, like neuron systems because it's lobsters. Nobody cares if you take a lobster apart because I'd eat it anyway. Like I'd like, you know, I'd take uh -huh. out the bit I need and eat the it rest. It is the most delicious part of the crayfish if you cook it right. Right. Well, so like. Well, no, I mean, the brain I keep separately, but, like, you know, that just means I'm having lobster tail and lobster soup. Like, that sounds great, and nobody's going to care. Um, but the, the so I'm, I'm still contemplating this, but what I realized was probably a better um, option was, um, okay, fog off, um, was uh, retinal tissue. Trisifila uh, are too difficult to work with on this. That's, that's the, yeah, that, that's a problem. Drosophila are too damn tiny. Too small. Too small. Too small. Much, much, much. So, I mean, we're going to, I want to brain, yes. I want to brain bow a Drosophila. Um, and so we'll talk about that in a bit. But, um, so, but in, in terms of the neuron mm. project for a first go, what I realized would be the best option would be a bit of retinal tissue. And so the only things that make sense are a fish. Because again, nobody cares if you're working on a fish, it's a fish. Um, but then I realized that they sell glowfish in Canada now, um, which means they come pre GFP Ooh, you guys modified. Are on up. I know. Well, so but that, and I can moving get them in every the color. So like, I so glowfish for those who, are, who aren't familiar are fish that have been genetically modified to express um, fluorescent proteins. Um, but they're they they've got two promo like there's two versions of the plasmid in the fish. So one of them is a ubiquitous promoter, and one of them is a tit, like a muscle specific promoter. So the the retinal tissue should also be um, like GFP or RFP modified. So it means that if I um, get a glowfish and sacrifice it, take its eyeball out, and then dissect out its retina, um, I can use that immediately. And like as long as I use it. It, like immediately after the the dissection, it should be viable. I should immediately be able to see spike activity in the array, so I can test the electronics and make sure that's working properly. I can stimulate it by like shining lights on it and or like projecting images onto it, um, and it's GFP modified, so I can actually look at it under a microscope and be able to see the individual cells. <clears throat> the problem here, though, mm -hmm. is that. Um, you're actually still going to be running into the same issues of, I mean, I actually probably think that your laws are worse than our laws, not worse, but like more strict mm -hmm. than our laws, but like anything with a spine is super off limits unless you have all of the proper paperwork. Potentially. Which is why, which is why this is one of those things that I talk about where I'm talking about like no not potentially i'm i'm like almost positive i mean i'd have to check I mean, you could probably google it right now. yeah uh, I, um i think it's I, so for us lobster, i think it's just mice lobster and also if you're going to eat the lobster yay because science video and food channel video boom yeah um uh but um like even dealing with fish uh in the United States, this becomes like you need to have a lot of paperwork done. Yeah. Um, and you need to have an appropriate holding facility. And a lot of the things that you want to do or look at already exist. Um, there's like a whole repository of these organisms. So, like, I, somebody was talking on Facebook about like that fluorescent bunny. And they're like, oh. Where's some buddies like this 
thing's been around for freaking ever. Um, yeah. And it, it, there are entire labs that do this, and you just need to have the proper paperwork. So that is definitely one thing that you should look at. Yeah, whereas I mean, with the Drosophila, definitely going to definitely going to check the laws before I do any of this, of course, because um, the last thing I need I want is to get dinged for doing something like this, and then you know. Have... And and having an IACUC review is not enough for anything that has a spine. Um, yeah, you will have people come out and physically maintain that, like manage your site and have to look and make sure that you're doing the stuff right like um, dems the rules dems the rules and, and, I, and I get, get that ding, they, they ding us harder for animal testing than they ding people for having children yeah which is fucked but um uh, well so one of the other things i was looking at so rather than the glowfish the, there are some places where you can get just fresh fish um so if i'm gonna eat it like i'm gonna chop its head off anyway because i'm gonna eat it um, and then I just happen to use the eyeball. Like, that's, there's no laws against that. Like, um, so there, there are ways around this, because it, like, the thing's dead the second I get it. Like, I'm not, there's no holding facility. There's no, like, and then I keep it in a tank. It's like, I'm getting it, and it's immediately used. Like, it, it's right in the blender kind of thing. Um, so... <clears throat> that is, that is also another interesting thing. If you, if you burn through the creature faster than it is required to appropriately maintain the creature like a whole bunch of that legal shit just goes right out the window and they're like oh what like i'm gonna send you 150 mice but they're all gonna be dead by ethical guillotine in um an hour and a half cool yeah so i mean that's so that's the way i'm looking it, I'm it look really like... matters about how you're doing yes. all of the stuff well, this is why i was looking at like food animals um and i mean i'm not getting a goat so like uh, like, small food animals, like, things that I can get at a store. So, like, you know, get a fish, take its eyeball out, eat the rest of it, um, but then, you know, then that way it's ethical. Like, I'm still, I'm gonna use it for food, like, it's part of the animal that would've just been thrown out anyway, like, or turned into soup. Like, so nobody's gonna care if I use the retinal tissue while it's fresh. Right? Like, there's, so there's, so this seems like a, a reasonable compromise. Um, I mean, I could also use lobster eyeball. It's all fine. Like, how, mm -hmm. Like that. The only reason I'm I'm hesitant about that one is because their retina is inverted, um, and it's also the dissection is literally harder. Um, I'd prefer a fish. Yeah. Um, fish like a nice big fish eye is is seemingly the way to go. But I mean, then I got to get the fish. But I could go get a big carp. Right. Which like, is why it would be really great to kind of create some sort of yeah place that fills a gap in the infrastructure for the biohacking community yes. that allows them to both maintain legal status and maintain ethical boundaries and do testing so that people that are interested in doing science can do that thing. That would be pretty cool. That would be pretty, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I think I know somebody. I, I do. I think, I think I also know somebody who might be doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of how I'm thinking about the next generation of, uh, the, the Neuron Project. Like, find an ethical source of tissue, um, get the, get the new arrays made, get some testing done, and then that way we can actually get some really good data, make sure that thing's working before we go back to doing cell culture stuff. Because when you're doing, like, cell culture neurons, nobody cares. Um... Like, you can grow as many friggin' cell culture neurons as you want, there is no laws against, like... Un, un, like that no actually that's it there's no there's no real laws against doing any of this there's no real laws about that at all um but if it was previously connected to an organism all of a sudden people care um which is you know um, healthy which actually. is which is probably healthy yeah and so you know there's definitely so, so the people that kind of being like you know dead fish are gonna be a problem like yeah, i know it needs to be a live fish <laughs> it needs to be alive when i bring it home <laughs> like like, it needs to be alive whilst it's in the lab. And then, like, you know, head, remove, throw fish in soup, like, take eyeball out. You, you basically have, like, it's, it's, so the retinal tissue it remains viable for up to six hours. 
Um, but I mean, you got to get it out of the eyeball and into like, like phosphate buffered saline pretty quickly. Um, and like with a little bit of nutrients and like, you got to keep the, the water oxygenated and all this kind of shit. But like, I only need it alive for like half an hour. Like I need it alive just long enough to test the array and see if I'm getting spikies. Um, and then I'm good. Then I can like, then I know that the thing works. Um, and we can test the software. We can test all the stuff. Justin. Stops. Yes. Will you make me a video where you go fishing? <laughs> sure. I, I want to see. I want to see this video. I, I, I want to see why? you I, I, fishing. I I have been fishing. I I've been. Fishing. I, I'm just saying. You know, it's been a very stressful year for everyone. Oh, okay. And maybe just a video of you. Just just fishing. Sitting yeah. on a pier, fishing, and then you know gouging the eye out of an animal would really <laughs> be what that's a we little... need. So much, I think. I'm not even joking. Um, I got I'd have to get my fishing license because in Quebec you have to have a fishing license. You, I did not know this. You cannot just fish. You have to like see. It's like a it's like a fifteen dollar yeah. license that you can for fish the people who are like, like, oh, you guys keep talking about all these legal and ethical things. It's like yes, because we don't want to go to jail or fined. I mean, I don't think you so, go to jail over so a fish. So if you want to be like, a biohacker, you also have to not. That's the, that's the thing, like, the law. this is why I'm like, everyone's like, oh my, oh my, I got a comment the other day that was like, oh my god, this is just like in the Netflix show Biohacking, I'm like, you shut your fucking mouth. Like, <laughs> okay, you know what, <laughs> 15 minutes into that fucker, there was the night vision eye drops, and I was like, wait, really? <laughs> I'm done. Oh my god, I need to, I need I'm to, done. I need I to, I need to go watch it. I pushed the button and I pulled the blanket over my head. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, my I'm, God. I have become television. That's shit. so funny. Just oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you haven't actually watched it. No. Reference the show. <laughs> the Night Vision. It, basically, the first episode is everyone we know. And you know what? They have the <laughs> bio piano. Oh my the God. bio piano. Yeah. Remember us talking I about know, yeah, the... I know, you were excited about the bio piano, and then the guy did it with melons, and it was dope. Um, uh, that's so fun. Did, did anybody do the lactose thing? Oh my god, that'd be so funny! <laughs> I need to, I'm gonna I don't go know, watch it I now. Could, I made it, I only made it two episodes in. Okay, well, I'm gonna go watch like, it, because I want to see if somebody did I, the lactose it, thing. It feels, no, it feels like people are trolling our lives. You're going to flip your shit. Oh, I'm gonna hate You're it. You're gonna be messaging me at oh, 2 a.m. Oh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna hate the shit out of it, and I am going to definitely be messaging oh, you it yeah. the entire time. No, but... Jordan, Jordan was like, Jordan was like, how do people have enough net money to fuck with us like this? <laughs> that's fine. God, that's so funny. Oh my, okay, yeah, I'm gonna go uh, watch that and then just cringe. Oh my god. Yep. Okay. It's the worst. Uh, <laughs> um. Anyway. Um. So speaking of okay. speaking let's get of back. Okay, yeah. So so let's let's schmoo these two concepts. So we've got we've got fish eyeballs and we've got brain bow and we've got electrode array. So what happens when you put them together? This is what happens when you brainbow a zebrafish. And it is awesome. So, like, brainbow looks... Because zebrafish are transparent! They are transparent, which is very cool. Uh, although you can you can clarify them to make them even more transparent. And it works best when you do this on, like, zebrafish embryos. Um, just because they're, like, super transparent. Um, but, like... Actually, I think this, this might be a... That might be a flaw. Um, but... Like, you can see their whole frickin' brain developing. Like, I think if you had the right setup, it's, so, it's just so pretty. So awesome. Um, yeah. and, like, you can see oh, every okay, neuron way, developing in their with, frickin' head. It's amazing. Before I forget. Yes. Before I forget. Yes. Um, with the Drosipula, okay. what you do is you get the offspring that have been genetically modified... And then you take the larva, not mm -hmm. the flies themselves, but actually the larva, and you use a glass rolling pin, like you're rolling out dough, oh, and geez. you smoosh them back, and then that's what you use um, for your sample under the microscope. Just so you know. Okay. That's that's the well, way. To so do the it. thing is, I've done, yeah. I've done. I mean, I did that whole video on doing the Drosophila larva dissection, and then. Um, 
isolating yeah, but you the, don't want to the, the, you don't want to do a dissection it's actually I know you just roll just them out like, well so what I did was I had to like pin the mouth parts and then like pull it apart isolate the sal salivary glands and then like stain and then squash those that was what I had to do in university which is like Jesus, yeah. that was a that was a right. morbid ass no, lab. No, it was fun those, though. You take those fucking larvae and you just roll them out like a piece of piece of croissant dough. I was just, so I was gonna flat. start with just them whole. Like I was gonna start with them whole. Maybe for, I was I was thinking of like maybe embedding them in paraffin and then doing the really thin slices. Like get like a yeah. cross section of like Drosophila. Like that sounds cool. Um, oh. Be really great. You get two pieces of um, plexiglass, drill holes in the corners, and then just make a clamp. And then you just put a bunch of larvae in there, and then you're just like smush. I mean, maybe and the, the problem like, with smush is it's gonna. Slide, but but smush is gonna totally is gonna work. like um, move the neurons around, which is what I'm concerned about. Whereas like all the papers I've seen have been doing um, thin thin sections with like embedded in paraffin. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like it's one of those things where you just have to do the right type of smoosh, which is why I'm thinking about compression plate as opposed to rolling them out, as opposed to cutting them into thin slices and like basically spending your entire day fucking that up. Yeah. Um, oh, so yes, this is this I is think, so this I is one of the reasons why I'm excited about. Um, uh, the particular flavor of brain bow that I bought, um, because it's auto bow and it's a ubiquitous promoter, it doesn't just stick to neurons. So this is a, a bit of fish skin. And you can see that it also does the, the rainbow pattern thing. Um, so it lets you see each individual cell in a piece of tissue. So this means that if I did this to, um, let's say a zebrafish, for example, and you dissected out the individual organs, and then section those, you'd actually see. So somebody did this to a heart, um, and I'm gonna. I want to see if I can find it, just because it's uh, really cool looking. Um, and like you can see, yeah, here we go. Like you can see the different populations of cells in heart tissue. Um, so th this is why I find this so fascinating. Like it lets you, because you see how it's a little bit clumpy. Like there's like distinct areas of like green and red. It means that all of those cells came from the same single cell at the start, because Brainbow only works once. Um, like it doesn't, it doesn't keep. Yeah. It doesn't keep you working. You can actually, you can actually track the it's like cell populations. The so development you, of the structure and the cells that it came from. Yeah. Based off of the patterns that you're seeing in the picture. Yes. Right. Which is fascinating. And this, yeah. is, this is the reason why I'm so excited about this. So I'm, I've been looking at, at ways of modifying Drosophila. Um, so we keep saying Drosophila, Drosophila being the common fruit fly. Um, so I figured out I figured out the best way to do this. You can buy flightless fruit flies. Because I was worried about this. I was like, how am I going to handle fruit flies without them getting everywhere? That's going to be gross. Flightless fruit flies. They, no. they stay contained. No, 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 no. no you're, you're thinking about this all wrong. Why? I just you don't need want to, them to fly have a flightless away. gene as your tag. No, I can't. I'd have to rework the, the brain bow thing. Um, it's easier to just get yeah. the flightless... Yeah. Flight... Also, you just freak out about... That's... Bugs. Well, no. It's I literally don't want <laughs> thousands of genetically modified fruit flies flying around my lap. That sounds bad. Um, they're fruit flies. They'll get everywhere. <laughs> um, but flightless... No, this... Well, you need a carbon dioxide tank then. Okay, that's fine. Or I can just freeze them. And one of those little. Uh, hang on, no, don't freeze them. Gas them. Hang on a second. I'll be they're, back. They're dead if I freeze them. Goes. Um. Okay. Let's. So what? Well, you don't want them. Yeah. And then you need one of these. Well, so I'm gonna do. So the new the new microscope that I yeah I know I I I definitely do need one of those but um. So one of the, the, the microscope that I just bought, so I just bought myself a new microscope, it comes with a micro manipulator. So I could actually do the micro injection, I just really don't want to, because I think that it's actually better to, to do electroporation. Um, so basically the, like, the same electroporator that I built for the uh, project, which uh, we don't talk about. Um, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. 
will actually work for electroporating um, Drosophila eggs. Oh, yeah. Micro-injection is totally unnecessary for so many things. Right, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bunch of... So I'm going to get these flightless fruit flies, and I'm going to isolate a bunch of the eggs, and then I'm going to electroporate the brain-bow stuff into the, the flightless fruit flies, and then have a population of brain-bowed fruit flies. And so then I can, like, look at the larvae and, like, see all their different fluorescency goodness. I'm excited. Still going to need a gas panel. Yeah, sure. Um... But, um, I mean, the other thing is I can do that same dissection that I did the last time where you just, like, pin its face and then just, like, pull. Um, and then I'll have, like, all the, all the, the bits, like, exposed. Because they're perfectly clear. Like, I don't know if you remember when I made that video, but, like, all of their organs are clear. There's no colorant when they're... Mm. The only thing that was colored when they're in larval yeah, stage is no, they're, like... It's, it's really The weird great. teeth. It's the weird teeth. Um... <clears throat> So I should be able to um, just, I, like, you know, put them in paraffin, do the super thin slices, and then have, like, cross-section of fruit fly that's, like, 20 different colors. And, like, then I can see the distribution of all the different cells, and I think it's just going to be really cool. Uh, and it's fruit fly, so oh, nobody cares if I work on it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, embed you them in paraffin, and then just really thin slices on a mandolin. Right, just there, isn't there? There's probably some sort of science grade mandolin. There is. It's a it's a microtone, which I've never had to use. Of course, there is. There's yeah, I know. I've never had to grade. use one, but like, I I've heard horror stories of it because apparently it's a pain in the ass. But yeah, like my, a microtome is the thing. So I need a microtome, and like I'll embed a fruit fly in thing after I brain bow it, and it's gonna be so fucking cool. It's gonna be a really hard project, but like, I'm excited. Like, I don't know. I still feel like a double, double plexiglass. I mean, I can try it all. I'll have lots of them. Like, what, in theory, yeah, it right? should be. I mean, if I, I mean, that's that's true. If, hey, it's if not I do, like you're gonna have just a fruit fly, right? Like, at the bare <laughs> minimum, I'm gonna be doing ten at a time, and like, it should be germline. Like, if I do an egg, every cell is gonna be modified, so that should get passed on in theory. Um, but I mean, it, that would depend on... No, that's not how that works. Well, I know. It would have to integrate into the right spot. And it's not an integrating plasmid. So I'd have to rework it for that. But, like, either way, like, it's fruit fly eggs. Like, they don't take up a lot of space. Like, I can electroporate a lot of them at once. Um, so either way, I can, I, I'll have some, you know, brain-bowed Drosophila, <laughs> which I think is just going to be fucking awesome. Um... <laughs> that's funny. All so right, somebody, what's, somebody what's just, next on the agenda? Somebody just commented, he's like, Microtome, in my uni, they just taught us to make micro-precise slides by hand. And, you know, the thing is, when I was doing plant the plant lab, that was what I did. It was just a razor blade. Okay. Remember that video about Japanese surgery school? Oh, God, where they have to, like, make sushi on a single grain of rice and then, like, put a grasshopper back mm -hmm. together? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do. No, Totally. And with my new microscope, I could totally do it. Like, um, well, you gotta get better glasses, okay? Because you have to do it by hand. They gave you a microscope, didn't they? Hmm? I could have swore that they gave the students, like, some kind of, like, dissection scope. No? They just, oh, Jesus, well, fuck. No. <laughs> that sounds awful, man. Um, get good son I do want to try that once right, like I would so. I would love to I would love to do that exam just to see if I could so for those of okay so for those of you who don't know what next we're talking about next time you about, come to visit next time you come to come to visit we are totally going to do that sorry we are going way off topic actually not not we're really no this is laboratory techniques, so laboratory techniques of of like okay so for those who aren't familiar um, the Japanese entrance exam to be a doctor includes these ridiculous ass like tests where they have the students do these extremely difficult things to see if they've got the like hand skills to be a surgeon basically so they have the and also the gumption and the gumption like it's just or whatever you gotta be able to do it you gotta be able to do it fast is. too so like one of the things yeah. is you have you to make have to be able to put up with shit basically so you've got to you, like one of them was you got to make 40 pieces of sushi using a single grain of rice 
for each thing. And it has to, like, look good. Like for it has, each piece of sushi. Like, for each, each piece of sushi, sushi you get one oh, piece of rice. I'm, okay, I'm... I, uh, oh, God. Um, I don't even know what People to look... People love miniatures. Japanese uh, medical Single grain rice sushi. Jam sushi. Why do we have to tell you how to do it? I'm just... I want to see if it comes up. <laughs> yeah, here you go. God, this is so stupid. I love it. <laughs> oh... Are we having a live stream about watching a video about having a live stream about watching a video? No. Um, so, um, you know, this is this is the exam. You've got to, like, make these tiny, tiny pieces of sushi. Like, um, which, you know, admittedly, if you could make this sushi, yeah, fuck it, operate on me. You're good. Like, which I think is the point. Like, actually, no, that's, yeah. that, that's exactly the point. It's, it's, um... It's just so funny. Like, <coughs> I just I find this endlessly entertaining. Um, let's see if I can make this image bigger. If yeah. I didn't love sushi so much, I'd love this more. But I really love sushi, and it's like there's not enough sushi here for me. I know that's what is the sushi I'm for a, ants? <laughs> I know I'm a large human being. I require much fish. Yeah. Um, I mean, this would be really fun. Like, have you seen those channels where it's, uh, you know, people just make tiny food for their gerbil? Like, <laughs> that's... Uh, yeah, that's the best stuff ever. Yeah, this is, that's I what this that is. I quality content in my life right now. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's 2020. I know. It's, and it's... most of the world is literally on fire. Yep. Yeah, so, okay, so one of them is you got to make tiny paper cranes. One of them is you've got to make tiny sushi. And then the other one is you got to, like take a like put a grasshopper back together like it's just yeah you have to reassemble an insect yeah that's my favorite i'm like wow it's it's that so, is the best search so yeah if you haven't if you, if you haven't if you haven't, like, if you haven't seen this go watch this video like just look yeah, this we're up not ja gonna watch we're not gonna watch it now guys. but like go find it yourself look up japanese medical entrance exam and it should come up because mm -hmm. it's just so funny and i'm like but it's actually, like, technically very difficult. And, like, but I think I have the, the like, coordination for it. Like, I think I might be able to do it. Like, I'm pretty good with a scalpel. I, I, I spent my, my years making tiny paper cranes. Um, so, okay, so just fun story since we're talking about this. Um, back in high school, um, you would, like, borrow your textbook. Like, you, they wouldn't, you didn't pay for it. Like, you, they just gave you the textbook. Um, and they gave you a book card. Um, so you had to, like, fill out this book card, um, and you gave the teacher the book card, and they gave you the textbook. And at, on, dur on during your last exam, you gave them the textbook, and then they gave you your book card back. And so that way, anyone who didn't have their book card, like, any book cards they had left, had they had to, like, chase down those students and either have them pay for the textbook because they lost it or whatever. So um, the way that it's I... Canada. Was there actual chasing involved? Well, I mean, you know, they ride the moose into battle. It was a whole thing. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know the the student comes in on a polar bear. It's a whole thing. No. Um, but um, so the way that I would gauge how easy an exam was was how many paper cranes I had made out of the book card by the end of the exam. So like it was an oblong rectangle. Like it was it was a it was a rectangle. Like it wasn't square. So I had to like tear off. We know how we know what they look like. It's a thing that goes in a book. No, it's not. It's not. It's like a. It's yeah. a rectangular piece of paper. It's about yay big, um, and so like I had to like tear off a piece to make it, it bigger than that. But yeah, um, so I had to like tear off a piece to make it into a square, and you know I'd make the first square into a into a little paper crane, and then the next. Now I've got this like long rectangle, which I would then divide into as many squares as I could. And then there's a little rectangle left, and I just make progressively smaller paper cranes until I was, like, at just absolutely ridiculously tiny. And so, like, if I hit, like, seven or eight cranes, like, I'm at, like, they're smaller than my than my pinky nail. Like, they're tiny little paper cranes. But, like, that was how I knew that, like, this, this exam is a joke. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was, that's my story about tiny paper cranes. So, like, I did this a lot. So I got really good at making tiny right. paper cranes. <laughs> Uh, Back to uh, yeah. Do we have more neuro stuff to talk about? Um, I don't know. I mean, so we talked. So we were. Oh, or are that, we just noodling now? We're, we're. I mean, we're kind of noodling, but there was one other thing that I wanted to talk about. So, um, there's this really interesting. So this. So I learned about this on um, Professor Potter's page, 
Um, and that was some really nice alliteration. I was I enjoyed that. Um, but um, so there's this thing called a two photon microscope, which is very weird, like very, 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 very weird. Um, so we're used to the idea of fluorescence microscopy, right? So that that's basically how Brainbow works. Uh -huh. Like you, you know, you shine a UV light on it, the thing glows, you can see the thing. Um, so two photon microscopy works kind of the same way, but the light source is backwards. So instead of using a UV light, you use an infrared laser. Um, so you have to have a very intense uh -huh. but short pulse length infrared laser for this to work um and so basically what happens is you, hey, quick, yeah quick interjection here yes somebody actually just asked a really great question okay um while you're talking make me a tiny crane i don't have any paper nearby go fly to me no i i uh you don't have any paper? I, I, the only paper I have is my, my like, recipe book, and I don't really want to tear into this. <laughs> Wait, you, like, you don't have a note card. You don't have any paper at all. No, I'm in my kitchen. You live in a house without paper. All my paper is in my other room. Or rooms. Go, go get me some paper. Okay, fuck make me. us a tiny crane. I, will make I you a crane. demand cranes. Yeah, yeah, okay. The people fine. demand cranes. <laughs> fine, fine. Fuck all of you. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is this is gonna be awful. This is not square. I need to. I'm gonna need to like square this up. Make it a square. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm working on it. Um, okay. So the the thing that I was talking about. Um, so this this two photon concept. Oh god, this is gonna be so hard to do at the same time that I'm trying to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So mm -hmm. the, the the yeah. The, the two-photon microscope, the way that it works is basically with these ultra-short, high-intensity infrared pulses, um, when the, the two pulses are focused down to a point, um, what ends up happening is the photons can add together. Um, it's, a very, it's, a very, it's, it's a very strange phenomena, honestly. Um, but two infrared photons basically add together into an, infra into an ultraviolet one which can then stimulate the, the, the fluorescent thing. Um, so basically the, the benefit of this is that, um, one, it can, it can stimulate things at much higher resolution. Because when you, when you have a... Um, when you use a, a UV light, it, the you, things that are not the thing that you're looking for end up glowing. So you can actually see that in some of these images. I'm going to have to move your head. Um, but you can see that the, the glow is a little bit fuzzy, um, is I think the best way that I can put it. And also, you have to keep in mind that these images... Actually, I think this is a better image. Um, so you can see that there's a lot of like background noise um, of stuff glowing that's not really supposed to be. Um, so basically, the, the and that's, that's sort of the issue with UV light. Like You're going to end up stimulating things that are not the molecule that you're interested in, um, and so you end up with a, a bunch of, a bunch of blur, um, speaking of Drosophila, um, so you end up, you end up with a bunch of blur, whereas this, this two photon thing, um, you don't have that problem. The, the trade-off though is a two photon microscope is like a hundred thousand dollars and that's the cheap one. So it's very, very, very expensive. However, it does let you do real-time imaging at, like, super high resolution um, of, like, neuron cultures. So I actually, I, I saved a video from, and so this is a, a two-hour growth, to like a two-hour time-lapse of some neurons growing in a, in a dish. And so you can see them move around um, and, like, kind of flow, which, is, which I find very interesting. So I'll play that again. Um... So, you know, you can see them doing their thing, and it's just a really, it's a really good way of being able to, like, track your neurons as you're, you know, working with them. And so on, you know, one of the things that uh, Professor Potter worked on was he built, like, a whole, like, chamber to, to put the neuron arrays into um, while, um, you know, he's doing the recordings and while he's, he's doing the, like, stimulation sessions and, and all this kind of stuff. Um, so it's really uh like 
it's just a really clever technique. And I mean, I like as soon as I saw two photon micros, I was like, oh yeah, I bet you I could build that. And then I looked up the requirements. I'm like, okay, no, I cannot build that. Like, <laughs> yeah. do you need a you need a femtosecond laser, like an infrared femtosecond laser, just to get the damn thing to work? And I'm like, I the, nope, nope, hard Wait. no. Like those are expensive. Wait, no. What's the what's the best best laser that you bought when we lived together? Oh, the blue one. Um, it that actually does do the thing. It just does it in a different way. So that's that's dumb. Okay, so maybe. It, it doesn't work. I haven't I, gotten rid of it yet. I Please don't. That's, those are almost impossible to find now. Um, but uh, And also I realized I can actually take that thing apart and like turn it into a very effective Raman spectroscope. So like, please don't throw that out. I really, I really want that. And I'm really bummed I didn't bring that home. Um, but um, I didn't have... There's a lot of your toys that you left here, and I, I brought them all. I, I had to rapid. I had to happened. rapidly leave a country. It, it happens. Um, your your country is kind of aggressive, in case you haven't noticed. Um, also, for those of you who, who don't think I'm actually, I, I am actually making a tiny paper crane. Like it's it's happening. Um, I'm almost done, actually. <laughs> um, I I have actually. I'm, okay, I, why don't you focus on your tiny paper crane? And give me the next topic to talk about. Or maybe we should just start taking some questions. I'm almost done. I think I'm we're like, kind of wrapping it up. I think we are almost wrapping it up. And also, I'm, I'm just folding the last wing, and then my tiny paper crane is done. Um, I'm, I'm using really shitty paper. Like, if I'd had, like, good origami paper, I could have made this smaller. But, it, okay. Don't make, it, don't make excuses. Okay, wait, wait. I Nobody don't, likes I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't know if you can see that, but... I'm gonna have to wait for the the camera to update because I know there's lag, um, but yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully you can see this. Um, but it's real tiny. It's like okay, wait. The, the camera's updating. Yeah. Okay, you can I see heard... it. Can you see oh, it? Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told you, I make tiny paper cranes. I make tiny paper Great. cranes. This is the worst fucking paper to do this out of, too. I, I could probably do it smaller. <laughs> but also, like, in that in the, the yeah. test, they get to use little little forceps. It looks like a tiny, tiny goose. It's tiny. It's so tiny. This is big. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, well, yeah, people, people are like, put it on your nail. Yeah, it's about the size. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. I, there's no way I'm going to be able to balance that. Um, if I bend it, there we go. So like, it's it's about the size of my pinky nail. It's it's real tiny. Um, so but the thing is, in that exam, they they're given like tiny forceps. Like they they get um, like little tools. Surgery tools. If if I had surgery tools, I could just, totally make this just smaller. In, just the hands for scale here. Yeah, my my hand for scale. I don't have a banana, but uh, <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah, it's it's real tiny. Uh, but if I had surgery tools, I could totally do that. Like, I have no no question I could make tiny paper cranes. Like, that'd be that'd be great. Um, so you know that test, I'm quite comfortable I would pass. Um, the the sushi, I don't know, just because I probably could. I mean, I'm damn good with a scalpel, so like, fuck it, why not? Um, you know, if if I can if I can cut on somebody's finger and not fucking dick their nerves, I think I can handle making sushi um so yeah um although so when i go to do the um the retinal dissection i'm gonna have to get like ophthalmic surgical tools which i'm really excited about because like <gasps> dude i brought i bought a napping kit so that i could make oh the the, the obsidian the tiny obsidian scalpels that's that's cool. The tiny obsidian scalpels that they use it's, for cutting retinas. I so that those would be which is just like the coolest thing. That is the really that is sorry. Really we're the just gonna thing. keep going. Hey, no, I mean we, we, we talked about retinas. That's fine. Um, I want to. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna look up an obsidian scalpel. Obsidian scalpel because they look really cool. Like they look like metal as fuck. They're so cool. And here I'll grab actual real things. And like they're really expensive. Like, um, but you, you totally can buy obsidian scalpels and like, they're very effective, um, and ridiculously sharp. Like they're sharper than any, um, 
Actually, so this is a really good comparison. Hopefully this is a big enough image. Um, but yeah, you can see that the difference between steel and obsidian is that uh, obsidian is, like, perfectly smooth. So the edge is ungodly sharp. Whereas on steel, no matter how much you grind it down, it's always choppy. Um, like, it's it's crazy. And, all, like, but yeah, you can you can buy obsidian. Oh, there it is. I found it. So this is, this is what an obsidian scalpel looks like. Um, yeah. So look yeah. at that clean edge. So you have this, and you have this, and you learn how to do mapping. And you make tiny little, tiny, tiny little obsidian scalpels. Tiny little obsidian scalpels that that make the finest of cuts. Yes. Am I at the right distance? Uh, uh, yeah, right about there. Um, but yeah, so um, I, I, I'm going to have to buy a set of ophthalmological um, surgical tools. And so, I mean, Gabe knows that I love surgical yeah, tools. Like, I, like, like, Gabe knows I love surgical tools. He also likes sur surgical tools. They're just, they're, I mean, they're just useful things to have around, but also they, like, I just like collecting them. Like, we, like between the two of us, we, we have so many. You never know what you're going to need. Yeah. A certain tool. Throwing away tools is always Sad. so. You know, sometimes you just yeah. Like we have we have a collection. collection. Also, you know, in in this day and age, like going to the hospital is maybe not a great idea. So uh, if I've got a little, <clears throat> like I've got like sutures and I've got surgical tools. If I like cut myself bad enough that like and it's in a spot that I can like a like access, like I'll just stitch myself up. Like what's the fucking point of going to a doctor? I can stitch just fine. Like. I have yeah. lidocaine. Why would Seriously. I? Why would I go to a doctor? Like, I mean, I'm Canadian. Like, if because if I go to a doctor, I'm gonna end up sitting in the ER for like nine hours, and like I don't really want to be in that building for nine hours because that means I'm gonna have to wear a mask for nine, like and a, like a serious mask I don't for like be there anywhere in public for nine hours. Exactly, like and especially in a hospital, like it takes one asshole who's not wearing a mask coming in in the wrong, like you know, barging in, sneezing on everybody. He's like, oh, cool, great, now I've got the cove. Like, that's no good. Um, so, like, you know, it's, it's good to have these tools. But, like, having a, um, like, having ophthalmological tools, there's no reason that I need those other than for this one protocol. Because I just need time. And, I mean, even if I did the lobster brain thing. You don't know that. That's true. Um, you don't know that. But, I mean, even if I'm doing the lobster brain thing, I'm still going to need ophthalmological tools because it's such a delicate, tiny structure that, like, I just need really tiny tools, and that's what ophthalmological tools are for. And, like, they're meant for eyeballs. They have to be tiny. That's just how it is. Um, so, you know, that's the thing. And so, you know, if somebody's like, I'm European. We have healthcare. It takes max two hours here. It's like, I'm Canadian. I've split my face open um, on the ice because I was skating and I'm Canadian. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I went to the ER, and it took four hours for them to see me just to, to put a couple of stitches in. And I'm like... Could have just fucking super glued this. Like, what the hell? Um, but my, you know, my friends are like, you need to go to the ER. I'm like, yeah, it's gonna be like two stitches. Who cares? Like, just let. Just I've got sutures. Let me do it. Just, like, just stitch that shit up. Right. Yeah. I'm like, it's, all right. Okay. But anyway, let's um, wrap it up. Let's do some questions. Yeah, I, I think that's probably a good call. So I mean, there's definitely a little bit of lag, so we're yep. gonna have to wait a little bit. But um. If, uh, if anybody's got uh, some, some questions for us, um, or you know, there's something that you wanted us to, to talk about, which we, we haven't already talked about, now is the time. So, uh, you know, let us... Uh... <laughs> he then apologized to the ice for the impact. I did not. I swore aggressively at it, and then got up and skated did another you, four no, kilometers. Did you say oop when you hit the ground? Don't lie. No, I went, you oop when you hit the um, I, I went fuck. I went fuck, ow. That really hurt. Um, but, um, so, uh, for people that are looking for this guide to bioengineering, the mango guide to bioengineering is in the Sci House library, which is accessible if you join our discord and I don't, yeah, that's the other thing. So there's, there's anything other than you just join the discord. Yeah. So, so there's like, two discords. Um, just enjoy for... like a shit ton of. Textbooks Somebody's and like, um, papers that I've done. So, oh yeah, so there's there's two discords. There's the SciHouse Discord, and then there's my Patreon and member only Discord. So you're free to join the SciHouse Discord, but the other one is for patrons only. 
Um, so one. Oh, are you are you asking Justin? Uh, like we got a bunch of questions. Justin, can you speak French? Un petit peu. That, that's yeah. it. That's all. That's, that's all of my French. Yeah. Un petit peu. Je te brise le coup petit si done. I, you know, I can, I can swear a little. Um, I, you know, I, I understand a little bit of French. I really should know more French, considering I live in Quebec. Um, but region, yeah. But everybody I know speaks English, and so I have no actual need to, other than when I like go do groceries. And these days, I don't talk to anybody when I do groceries. I like use the little robot, and I don't interact with anybody, and everybody leaves me the fuck alone. Um. So that's a thing. Um. Somebody asked, uh, or somebody somebody said, "What is this? A Canadian swearing? What what is this?" I'm like, "You haven't watched Letter Kenny, have you?" <laughs> oh, In yeah, French. yeah, no, um, but no, Canadians yeah. swear a lot. Like, there's there, we are polite, but we will still tell you to go fuck yourself. It's like, um, but yeah, so that's that's a thing. Um, okay, so some more questions. Um, okay, project updates on the spider silk. I've done it, y'all. Like. I've made silk. I'm like 99% sure that I've made silk. That's the video that I'm working... Like, once this stream is over, I'm going back to the editing mines and I'm, like, editing the spider silk video. People are people are talking talking faster. I, hey, I'm... Boy East, in the mail. What? They, oh, it's done. There's, they they yeah, dear, it. Yeah, dear, dear... Okay, so so let me just do the updates. So Spider Silk is done. I I've made Silk. Now I'm I'm making the video the update video. That'll be out in, in a couple of weeks. Um, I'm just try. I I've, I've got to sum up like two years of work into one video. So it's 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 a big video. Um, so that's coming out. Deer milk and egg yeast are both done. Those will be shipped to me shortly ish. Um, so those will that'll be a video in a couple of months. Uh, I'm now working on um, dissolving uh, silk and making fibers out of it, so that's really cool. Um, what were the other updates? Um, the glowing plants is kind of dead in the water. Um, we're we're still working on it, but it's it's shit's fucked. It, it'll take some Always time. Always going to be the project that everybody wants but never actually works. Basically, yeah. Um, um, Laura, can you make mushrooms that taste like meat? Yes, but. Do you need to genetically engineer them to do it? No. Yeah. Look up uh, some Buddhist cooking techniques, because um, they developed a whole yeah. Also, you system can make you can make pol- you make food pol- like you don't have to make out of yeah, like you don't king have to oysters. Make it like that difficult. Yeah, those king oysters. Mm. Yeah, I mean king oysters the made into pulled pork are meat. pretty good. The only weird thing is it's weirdly crunchy, like. It, like, it's, because it's mushroom. Yeah, it's got a little bit more of a... Yeah. Than, than and, you're used to, but... But, I mean, I mean, it tastes fine. What I found is if you make them into, like, steaks, and then you pretend they're chicken, it works really well. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, some of the best parts of biology are understanding what already exists, as opposed to trying to, like, make things happen for you, you're like, oh, hey, there's actually this thing. I just need to learn how to cook. Right, like, if you had some mushrooms and some dulse, like, that dulse tastes like bacon. Like, it's seaweed that tastes like bacon. Mm-hmm. Like, you mix some dulse, you no, make yeah, some mushrooms, you, now have, like you yep. now have mushrooms that taste like bacon. It's a thing. Also, like, um, also, there's other mushrooms that, like, mushrooms... Or plant stream. Um, so, like, mushrooms, there's certain mushrooms... We've already done that, like, four times. Yeah, we, yeah, we're, we're not doing more permaculture streams. We've done, like, four of them. Um... But so, mm-hmm. like, on the on the topic of mushrooms that taste like meat, like, there's, like, my favorite mushroom is the lion's mane mushroom, and it tastes like lobster or shrimp, depending on how you cook it. Like, yeah. it's real good. Like, or there's also the lobster yeah. mushroom, which tastes meaty. Or, like... The lobster mushroom. Yeah. Like, chanterelles are also delicious. You know, like, there's so many delicious mushrooms that you can, like, do the thing. Um, okay, mo- uh, moving on. Yeah. Uh, holograms. Let, let the thing be itself. Okay, cool. What, I else, literally, what else we got? literally have hologram next to me. I'm working on the hologram. That'll be out in two months. So the my video schedule is this month is Spider Silk. Next month is the Daft Punk um, respirator helmet. And then the month after that is the hologram stuff. So it's all being worked on. It'll be done. It's coming out soon. Please be patient. Um, uh, okay. Um, what else we got? Have you ever tried flex tape? In in what? 
In what context? I don't know what that means. Um, Moving on. Can you make a store with kits to make your stuff you made on the stream? Um, I'm actually working on that. I'm, like, legitimately starting to... No, whoa, whoa, pause. What? You gotta read the whole thing. This person wants a bread kit. Yeah. Okay, so you take the lime and you put it in the fucking coconut kit, okay? A well, bread kit is literally sugar, I, I assume they mean. I assume they mean the, the carotene yeast? I don't know. They I'm, just said I'm I not... want a bread kit. Bread kit, I assume, is they want the carotene yeast. The point is, uh, th but it, it brings up the, the point of a store, which I am actually looking into setting up uh, an online store to sell all the bits of interesting DNA. So like the silk, the egg yeast, the the milk plasmid, um, all that kind of stuff. So yes, that is it is happening. It's just going to take me a little while um, I, because I don't have anything that I can put on it yet. Like until I know that the milk... Uh, plasmid and the egg plasmids work properly, and until I've got a version of the silk that I'm happy with, it, I can't. I don't have anything I can put up there. So like, it's probably seven to eight, seven to nine months out before that happens. Um, but it is something I'm I'm very seriously working on. Like we're looking into like how we're gonna package it, what we're gonna include, are we gonna do kits, are we just gonna do DNA, all this kind of stuff. So like, it is it's a thing. It's gonna happen. Just be patient. Um. Annabelle, you've asked this question multiple times, so I'm going to jump in. Je suis désolé. Yeah. Je suis désolé. Très um, That is how you say sorry. Or you, you know, just give someone a yeah. See the like, like I said, so the guys that's, like that's egg white, egg, yeah, egg, egg white, carotene, deer milk for bread kit. That, yeah, that's what he wants. So like, I I will put together. Okay. Eventually, right. I will I will put together a brew and omelet kit. Um, I just need to make sure that it works first. Um, and so, like all those, once those videos come out, that means I'm ready, basically. So, like when when the silk video comes out, you'll see the point that I'm at now. But I'm not at the point where I would be comfortable selling it because there's still work to be done. So once I've once I've crossed the line of like I'm I'm comfortable that other people can use this and I think it's a viable useful thing. Then I'll sell it. But until then, I'm not going to put it out because I'm not a hack. Like I I only want to sell good things that I'm like proud of and comfortable with selling. So it's just going to take some time. Um, Tom, chill the fuck out, dude. Yeah. Sentence doesn't even make sense. No, no, no. Um. Okay. Uh. What do you guys Egg think beer. of? Egg beer, dude! Egg beer! Wait, actually... I mean, it's okay, meant for so a sack, so that should work. I'm, like, totally... I'm totally way more cottagecore than Justin is. And so... I mean, I love like, cottagecore. I'm just my stuck in the middle updates? of a city. Yeah, what are my updates? I'm about to do classic, old-school, fermented eggnog. Oh my god! You know, oh my god! It's almost that time of chickens. year. Oh my god! I've got to make it's eggnog. It's that time of year, baby. Oh. And so I, I learned this from eggs. Gabe, and it's amazing. Yeah, you take a bunch of eggs, you separate them, you freeze the whites, and then you take the yolks. You add enough boozemahals and or sugar to make the acidity high enough that only certain things can grow in them. And then you let that ferment. The real eggnog was I, yeah, the I use food the, preservation technique. I don't know if ferment. Yeah, sorry, right. we're it's, not talking about neurons anymore. No, we're talking it's about not fermented eggnog, though. It's it's it just aged. Spice season. It's just aged. It's not fermented. Yeah. There's too much alcohol. Nothing grows in there. It's not fermented. There's nothing mm -hmm. growing. It's so if you want a recipe for how to do this, Alan Brown has a fantastic, fantastic recipe on making aged but, eggnog, and it's so fucking good. What? But his recipe has far too much sugar and alcohol because he'd get in trouble if somebody got sick. Um, I actually don't care if any of you people die. So, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, you know, try to... What? It's okay. I'm allowed to see that. Um, okay. And, um, and so, uh, you know, don't over booze or over sugar yourself here, but then you just, you age the egg yolks with the cream. Oh my God. That's real good. Oh, it's September. That means we're going to start it at the end of September. We're going to age it for an entire month. 
Oh, I'm, I'm going to start it, amount. like, next, next week. Like, I got it. So I got to get through this video. I got to get through this. making eggnog right now. Why am I talking with you? I could be making eggnog. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is a... So I, I make aged eggnog <laughs> every year now. Um, and it was a thing that I learned from Gabe. And it's my favorite thing to bring to the Christmas party. Because everyone's like, ooh, you brought eggnog. I'm like, no, I brought the best eggnog. Also, me and Gabe have different preferences when it comes to the level of sugar and things. So I'm quite happy with Alan Brown's recipe. I, I liked it. It was really good. And like, oh man, will it fuck you up? There is so much alcohol in there. Like, so I, and I used some of my ultrasonic, I used some of the ultrasonic stuff in it last year. Um, so I used um, some brandy. I used some ultrasonic, like aged rum. And then I used, um, I think whiskey. I, I don't remember what it was, but like, I, I bought a lot of booze just for that. And like, I'm not really a drinker, but like it's the one alcohol thing I do per year, like just aged eggnog. And I, because I, you know, I just like share it with my friends and like, it's just, it's a great way to spend the winter because it's really good. Now the secret is, and so Alton Brown's recipe and yeah, I would fight him in person. <laughs> His recipe is substandard. One, too much booze, mahal, and sugar. Isn't required. Totally overpowers the nice umami of the egg. Second, you gotta whip those egg whites and fold them into the nog for a really fluffy egg nog. The yolks? Yeah, mean? I know. We're still looking at pictures of neurons, but I am talking about folding in egg whites. Yep, yeah, sorry. Sorry, folks. Um, but it's good. It's the best. Yeah, I, I love yeah. it. I love Justin, it. Justin, lots of requests here for Christmas special. Okay. We're making a Christmas special. I mean, I was... We're yeah. making a Christmas special. Okay, I'm down. Okay, it's going to happen, people. Yeah. Um, we might do it on Food Emporium, or Taste Emporium, rather. Fuck, that's the second time I did that. Fuck. Um, yeah. Like, let's do it. Let's do a Taste Emporium stream where we make some aged eggnog. That sounds great. Um... But yeah, so that'll be that'll be fun. Um, all right, let's do one or two more, and then let's let's call it for the day. Because um, yeah, it's got uh, some, some but yeah, solid questions. So, so somebody asking for the recipe, just look up Alan Brown aged eggnog. Um, it's fantastic. Alton Brown. Alton Brown. Sorry. Come on, pull it together. I know you're sleepy. I'm tired. I'm very tired. Alton Brown uh -huh. aged eggnog. You'll find it. It'll be great. Um, uh. Okay, what else we got? Um, thoughts on Neuralink. Um, yeah, basically. This I, is my TED talk. On, on Elon Musk. I think he can shove it up his ass. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think Neuralink is interesting. Yeah, I think, I think Neuralink is interesting, um, but like everything Musk does, I take it with about a pound and a half of salt. Also, like their their um, the recent thing where they're like, we've tested it, and their their sample size was one. I was like, oh yeah, great. Um, Hyper invasive brain surgery that had to come back out in two months. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, I love that shit. Yeah. Um, so, so um, would it be possible to edit your stomach lining to produce vitamin C? Uh, no. Um, you, that's a, that's a liver specific mod. It yeah, has looked it, into that. It's, thing. I mean, it's doable. You just have to mod your liver, but liver cells are notoriously difficult to mod and they don't keep any mods. Like they, they just shed it after like six months. So technically yes, but in reality, no. Um, uh, what else right. we got? Like I said, he's not aging it because, you know, he's got his constituency. Um, anything under a month? And you're not really doing it right. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, will actually make a video about making eggnog. Do it. Um, uh, okay, um, so how do you select which organism you want to modify when, you, when wanting to exp express a specific protein? Um, so this is sort of, this kind of is fairly easy to boil down. Your, your choices usually are some sort of bacteria or some sort of yeast, unless you're trying to do something very specific. Um, if you're trying to do something very specific, mm -hmm. you're, you're probably wanting to modify a specific organism from the get-go. But if you just want to produce something, your choices are bacteria or yeast. 
Um, I tend to prefer yeast because they're better at making large proteins, large quantities of proteins, and they're easier to work with and they don't smell. Um, whereas bacteria are easier to work with and modify, but they're gross and they have other problems. So it really depends what you're trying to do. Um, if you want to do a like human-like protein, then you really do kind of have to do yeast because then the, the bacteria don't fold it properly. I mean, they don't glycosylate it properly, and so it comes with its other issues. It really boils down to what specific thing you're trying to do. Um, if you're just trying to do something quick, fast, and in a hurry, you use bacteria. Um, if you want something in huge volumes, you use yeast. That's, that's basically how I think about it. Um, yeah, unless you have access to a wave bag, but, you know, then it's a hardware thing. Um, not interested um, in your opinion on Elon. What about the science of it or its implications? Its implications are non-existent. The science is meh, and Elon's a dick. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, anything planned with plants in the future? Uh, uh, well, yes, yeah, but all, all the I'm time. not going to talk about it. All, constantly. Yeah. Always plants. Always plants. All the time I just, so I just, I just, house. I just had to kill all of my plants because they were infested with bugs. So I'm letting my entire like house sit and be insect free for about a month and then I'm going to rebuild everything as aquaponics because fuck it why not I have a 12 foot tall lettuce <laughs> that's pretty cool <laughs> forgot about that um, yeah uh, okay it's any so any updates on the cancer project well I'm waiting to hear back about a quote still um, wait us me, yours or mine mine the malaria one the malaria cancer or that other cancer project we're um, both working on cancer projects yeah um so yeah the, the i assume the malaria one um the malaria one i'm waiting on a quote that's that's it there's there's the update like there'll be an update once i i mean the thing is there's not going to be an update for like six months even after i get the quote because it's going to take them a long time to make it because these things are slow um mm -hmm. someone's like a little dismissive i'm like well i mean He's overexcited, so fuck him. Um, yeah, malaria. That was the one they were interested in. Um, okay, so... Which headphones? Justin's or mine? Come on, use nouns, people. This is the third time I've seen someone asking about headphone brands. Mine are super luxe. Um, because they were cheap. <laughs> they, they, they were... Uh, mine are sound poor. Yeah. Because they're also cheap, and they're... Uh, they're connected to each other. Yeah. Um, okay, let's do one more, and then let's wrap it up for the day, because we're, we're, like, super off yep, topic. let's get out of here. Um, yeah. No, let's talk more about eggnog! <laughs> um, oh, somebody somebody grew a nasturtium, and apparently it's beautiful. Good, I'm glad. I'm glad you, you got yours Good. growing. They're yeah. wonderful plants. Um... Uh, as a non-American, I don't understand why you hate Elon. Is a political thing. It's, no, it's because he's a moron. It's it. Yep, move on. Moving move on. on. Don't um, look at that. Anyway, um, so updates on the brain cheese project from before. We just did a whole stream about update. That's the whole. That's the whole point of this stream, that man. Was our, that was, that was the whole thing of this stream. <laughs> just um, wait until it's uploaded and then come on back. Basically, yeah. Um, and on that note. Yeah, we're, we're done. Um, this has been a lot Aww, of fun. thanks, Kim. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, All right. So we're going we're gonna to call it for the day. This, is, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, Gabe, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for everybody who donated. It really is greatly appreciated, and it makes my life so much easier and just more able to do things. Um, thanks for everybody who, who tuned in. Thanks for hanging out. This has been a lot of fun. Um, I don't know when the next stream is going to be. We're, we've kind of given up on doing it weekly. Um, so just, you know, follow me on Twitter, and you'll find out when I post about it. That's basically the best way that we can do this. Um, as always, there's links in the description to various other bits and pieces. Um, there's links to the Discord. There's links to the Patreon. There's all this kind of stuff. Check the description. There's stuff down there. Um, and without further ado, I will see you guys on the next one, and keep an eye out for the update to the Spider Silk Project. That's all for now. See ya.